Hey big boys, we've got another big boy deck. It's a legendary human deck, and it's most gangster. So much to talk about. First of all, Odric. For four mana, Odric is a legendary creature that says, all creatures we control gain whatever abilities our other creatures have. So for example, if one of our creatures has haste, all of our creatures have haste. If one of our creatures has first strike, all of our creatures have first strike. Same goes for flying, menace, double strike, indestructible, and vigilance. It's pretty strong value, but that is not the only thing going on in this deck. It also has four mox ambers. If we control a legendary creature, mox amber can produce that color of mana. And if you notice, we have a lot of legendaries. There's Noran, Kithian, Thalia, Other Thalia, Karazev, Odric, and then this new guy. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce his name. And with 23 legendary creatures in deck, Mox Amber is pretty reliable. Plus with Noran, it's almost impossible for our opponent to kill it because anytime someone attacks or plays a spell, Noran leaves play and then comes back at the end of turn. And that works well with a card like Champion or Thalia's Lieutenant. On top of that, Noran works very well with Kithian. Basically, Kithian flips if we attack with two other creatures, and that includes Noran. And with the help of Mox Amber, Kithian can flip as early as turn two. When it flips, we get a Planeswalker that can untap a creature we control and make it indestructible for a turn, or Gideon can become a 4-4 indestructible creature until end of turn, which also works very well with Odric. Likewise, we have two Dauntless Bodyguards, we can give a creature indestructible if we sack it, and arguably the best standalone card in the deck, Thalia, Gardener of Thraven. Makes non-creature stuff cost one more. It's pretty good considering that we only have Mox Amber and Smuggler's Copter as our only non-creature spells. And then we also have three Kara Zevs. Kara Zev is perfect for this deck. It has both First Strike and Menace to work with Odric, and in case people don't know what it is because on Magic Online it seems like nobody knows what it is, a creature with Menace can only be blocked by two or more creatures. So if all of our creatures gain Menace, it's going to be very hard for our opponent to defend. On on top of that, Kara Zeb works very well with the Turtle Dude. Turtle Dude has haste, protects all of our other creatures from burn spells, can gain first strike, and also has Mentor. Mentor is a new ability that puts a 1-1 counter on an attacking creature with power less than Turtle Man. Kara Zev, having only one power, can easily be pumped by Turtle Thingy. Likewise, we have Swift Blade Vindicator. Vindicator works very well with the Turtle, but it works exceptionally well with Odric. If we have Vindicator and Odric out, all of our creatures gain double strike, vigilance, and trample. All three of those work very well in our deck because with the Norns, Champion, and Thalys Lieutenant, our creatures can get very, very big. So giving trample and double strike to these these guys is quite huge. We also have two Mirroring Crusaders. They have Double Strike. Double Strike is very good in this deck. And then again, we have one Smuggler's Copter. It can give our creatures flying, but it's very convenient in the deck. First of all, Noran can crew it. And second of all, because there are so many legendary cards, we're likely to have some duplicates stuck in hand. And when the Copter attacks, we draw and discard a card. It's quite good. As for lands, we got four caverns, one Mutavolt. We also have a castle that protects legendary creatures. And we also lean heavily towards white lands. But why would we want to do that? Well, that brings us to the sideboard. We've got four Max the Moons in the sideboard. It's a human. And with Mox Amber, can come out as early as turn two. It works well against the right decks. Also, we have Aether Sworn Cannonist. It stops Storm, it stops Snapcaster, and it's also a human. We also have two Katakis. It's anti-artifact, and it happens to be a legendary creature. As for Graveyard Hate, we have Rest in Peace and two Remorseful Clerics. Since Remorseful Cleric has flying, having it out with Odric gives all of our creatures flying. Then there's two Arc Champions. It's good against Black Red decks, but it also works very well with Norn because Norn's gonna be entering and leaving every turn. Arc Champions ability gets triggered a lot for a lot of life gain. We also have this for life gain, which also has protection from red and black spells. And lastly, we have two Fiend Hunters. It's a human that exiles another creature. That's the deck, so let's get to the gameplay. But for First, don't forget, I'm giving away 30 free deck boxes. All you need to do for a chance to win one is to be subscribed and leave comments. There are three winners per video, and I'll announce the previous three winners somewhere in this video. But without further ado, here's a gameplay, and I hope you enjoy it. Opening hand looks like it'll work, so we'll keep. Start off with Kithion, and pass back. Teleria West, okay. And nice, Mox Amber, which means you can go with the Crusader this turn. Swing for two, and pass back. And if both of these survive, that means you can go with Odric next turn, give double strike. And if it is Tron, it looks like I'll have a good shot at doing it. One plays Expedition Map, and passes back, which which means now we can go with Odric. All right, so double strike, we'll swing for eight this turn, which means we'll have lethal next turn. And there's a concede, well, a pretty clean start. So going into game two, I'm gonna dump a Copter, Norn, Vindicator, and Odric to put in four Maguses. And with the Maguses, we'll have a good shot at winning this one too. And with that, let's go to game two. Open hand, no land, so we'll mull. And this, we'll give this a shot. No land. It's gonna be a bit risky here if we don't hit another land. And do we fetch for a planes? I was hoping to hit this soon. I think we can grab a planes here. Go champion, amber, and just pass back if we don't have a second land though we hella screwed okay opponent passes back <laughs> That is muy grande. We have two free mana now, but can't play anything else. Next turn, we'll go with Magus. And for now, pass back. Second Tron land. When it passes back. Now let's try this champion. Okay, it hits. And then make red. Play another amber. Make another red. And there's Magus. There's for knowledge. Okay, that hits. And now swing for seven. And back to our opponent. What shall they do? What can they do? Ooh, dismember. Okay. Oh, we have the Tron lands too. Ooh. Can we still get it here? Oh, Drick. It hits. So now everything will have 
first strike and menace. What he'll be sheet. A repeal. Ouch. We'll put him down to one, it looks like. But five cards in hand with Tron active. I don't know. Let's see what they got. Batter skull. We have menace though. I wonder if they know what menace is because there's a lot of players that I've been seeing that always try and block this thing with one creature. Like 80% of people seem to think they can block with one creature. Okay, do we play this? Might as well play Thalia. What disease? Ooh, commit. On second thought, they would have lost no matter what. Because even with cards that have back on top, this would give first strike two creatures swinging in the first strike damage would go through before the lifelink damage went through so either way would have won all right see they, they think they can block it. it no you can't they even have a little message here that says you can't block it oh now they're trying to block this one but they, they, oh, oh, okay well for a match one of a deck i would say it was rather interesting we fired things off really fast both games and let's just hope the next matches go as well as this one so on to the next one opening hand no lands we're in a mole yes yes it seems okay we shall keep and Athalia. Yeah, we'll keep that on top. Start things off. Mox Amber. Champion. And let's see what our opponent's got. Ooh, Delver. Back on our turn. Let's go, Thalia. Swing for two. And back to our opponent. Will it flip? No, it will not. Pyromancer, sure. Back on our turn. Crusader. Not bad. Not bad. Let's play the Crusader. Okay. We'll swing with both. They might want a two for one, but I doubt they would. Nope, they take the five. And then back to them. Still no flip. Opponent passes back. Hmm. It's hoping for another land. I suppose we'll just go with this. And then swing in with a bunch of stuff. Bolts that. Sure, we got a second one in the hand, but we can't play it this turn. But these guys look pretty safe. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, oh, no. Bolt. No. Vapor snag on the champion. Okay. And a chump there. Then second main, we'll go with the champion again. And pass back. Still no flip. Oh, what the hell? This shit. No wonder why this isn't flipping. Okay. Do we go Thalia? Yeah. Play the Thalia. And swing with the Crusader. At some point, you might want to keep it as a blocker, but for now, they're at seven. We can put pressure on them by attacking. Jump there. And then back to our opponent. And now it flips. Good for you. Thought Scour. And no attacks. Interessante. And nice and Norn. That settles it. Let's just go Thalia's Lieutenant. Ooh, and they built the Crusader. Well, shit. I thought we were going to attack with that to trigger the Norn. Otherwise, I would have played that first. We can still attack with this. Hmm. I think we should hold off on attacking. You know what they say. Slow and steady wins the top spot on the Human Centipede. So let's pass back. What is these? Okay. Well, we're getting a bit more bogged down than I thought we would. But I still think we're favored to win this. Play the Crusader. And again, we'll just pass back. But soon. Soon we shall attack. Why don't Sunk for three again? We have so many big boys. Hmm what to do what to do i suppose we shall play the cards of and then play the second norn even though we'll have to sack one then now do we start swinging yeah i'll swing with these two big boys i imagine they'll chump block indeed then the norns come down and then our opponent realizes they can't win i mean they are pretty big going into game two i'm gonna dump two bodyguards one cards of and in their place we'll put in a rest in peace and two fiend hunters and with that let's go to game two opening hand this mutavault's kind of in the way but we'll tolerate it same envisions and back in our channels go champion and pass back but if we don't hit a land next turn, we better start spreading them cheeks. Oh, opponent missed a land drop also. Yeah, we get a land. But we can still spread our cheeks if we want to. Play a champion, play a Kithion, and then swing for three. It was almost worth playing a Norn this turn, but Kithion attacking next turn, and then flipping would be big boy explosion and pants. I'm gonna play that untap, passes back. Mox Amber, nice. What be the best play? This is okay, but we gotta pair it with something. Could go this and this. I think that's the right play. Actually, what if we just mix it up here? Let's do the opposite of what anyone would expect. Let's cast the Norn. They bolt that in response. But we'll turn Mutavolt into a creature so Kithium can still flip. Oh, no, we play that this turn. Well, at least it was the opposite of what anyone would expect, I guess. Because who would have expected that I did that? Okay. Oh, a Vapor Snag. And this is what happens when I make decisions at 4.19 in the morning. Oh, we can still win this. Well, on the bright side, we're not losing the Crusader. Because had I not used the Mutavolt last turn, I would have gone with the Crusader, and then we would have lost the Crusader. That's thinking outside the box. Back on our turn. Should we play this? I want to. I really do. But I kind of want to protect it until we can do something something with it. So we'll just play the Crusader and pass back. Armagoyf, sure. We can still attack through that. Okay. Well, let's swing at the Crusader. They can't block. And might as well play the Vindicator as well. Back to our opponent. Another Goyf. But with the Crusader, we're alright. Kithian. Swing with Crusader. What is these? Vapor Snag. You ho you. So we'll play Kithian, follow up with the Crusader, and then pass back. Opponent plays Young Pyromancer. Swings for eight. Sure. What healthy these shit? Hooting Mandrels? Indeed. So now best move here. Mutavolt into a creature. Play the Lieutenant. And now we swing with everything. How would they even block here? They're obviously block there but we still have lethal block there that's still lethal though so i think at this moment they're gonna realize they screwed and they figured out their only way out which is to go to one but on the bright side we can do this untap the crusader making indestructible and now i think we got this Fork bolt sure opponent passes back all right let's go for it swing with these hoes and there's the game not bad not bad i would say the match itself was muy interesante but now on to the next one opening hand we have kithian mox amber norn i say we keep play the kithian pass back and back in our turn champion our curve is kind of balls right now so i suppose 
pose. Just play the lieutenant. Yeah. Swing for three. And back to our opponent. Blocking ballista. Nice. Takes out the lieutenant. Back on our turn. Let's swing for three. Our lands are kind of letting us down here. Play the champion. Pass back. Oh, it plays turn again. That's actually quite the problem for us. So there goes champion. Back on our turn. There's a land again. But with thrown a geth out, it's an uphill battle. Fizz will see if he wants to block here. He won't, though. Because he could make indestructible. And then end turn, might as well do this. Play Odric and pass back. They could throw in a geth one of these things. Take out the Kithian or even this. Worker. Sacks the worker to make Ballista mega big. So I think they've got us. So on to game two. So going into game two, I'm going to dump two bodyguards for two Katakis. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, we do have a Kataki, so we will keep. Let's see what they got. Nice. Megusta. So now we go Kataki. <laughs> I mean, I guess they could still win here, but probably not. Hmm. Maybe they're hoping for like a ballista or something. And back in our turn, we play this. Do we go with Thalia? No, we go with this. I'm gonna make sure if they play the ballista, they're gonna have to dump two counters and not one for Kataki. They get a 14 back to them. Let's see. Do they have ballista? Walker. That is fine. Here's where things get interesting. I was gonna play Odric because it would get haste. But with the castle here, we can protect Kataki from this. See if they fall for it. No, they do not. Okay, then let's go with Odric and then pass back. What will they do? Opal. Throwing a guess interesting so this could become a 6-6 six, six. i'm not too worried about the tokens because of this but it does make things awkward the best move here let's go thalia followed by the lieutenant ojik will give haste and first strike so even if they block here and kill it these things will be lethal they're out here is that they can sack this make the tokens now block a bunch but our guys won't be at risk uh and our opponent disconnected uh, okay i wonder if they rage quit it's possible while we're waiting here are the deck box winners this time there are still 24 more free deck boxes to win so be sure to keep watching the videos to see if you've won now back to this well then i guess they would rather have us just win instead of getting hit by all this i mean i don't blame them the kataki probably set them over the edge we would have definitely won that game but i'm not sure about that match not gonna call that a win more like a draw but the win game three was a very much a possibility especially if we drew kataki but now on to the next one opening hand a lot of lands and two duplicate cards here i think we got a mole and this is better we'll keep Ooh, nice we shall keep this as well semen visions and back to us start off with kithian and pass back on it bolt sure another amber and unfortunately there's no way to play thalia's lieutenant and this on the same turn using two ambers so for now we'll just go Arzev, followed by norin and then pass back the opponent passes back back on our turn we'll try champion followed by lieutenant hitting Karazev, sure and now we pass back in between the norns and these guys we're gonna have some very big boys another semen visions can't have too many of those and another bolt okay at least this big boy's safe back in our turn thalia nice might as well go with the thalia and then swing for six on a chump sure and then back to them i'm plays that passes back a little suspicious do we swing in yeah something doesn't feel right though bolt sure better than cryptic bouncing this so i take the seven back to them nothing from our opponent again and then a thalia's lieutenant might as well go with that now we got a 10 10 swing with that 10 they go to three back to them cycle sultering suns how will they survive this oh so there's emrakul we lose all of our shit Okay, at least we still have Norn to keep us company. Oh my god. All right. Opponent passes back. Champion will take it. We'll take anything, honestly. Back to our opponent. Up, oh, no, they, they bolted. Okay. Opponent passes back to us. Okay. We pass back to them. They electrolyze us. So if we see a snapcast or a bolt, they win. Well, that will also give them the win. Hot damn. And unfortunately, our butthole's not wide enough for two Emrakuls. So we're going to game two. Going into game two, I'm going to dump all four of these and in their place, put in four graveyard hate cards. And with that, let's go to game two opening hand it's all right so we shall keep start with norn pass back and then back on our turn we shall go with thalia and then pass back pyromancer interesting so what to do what to do we could go champion then that we could go that to protect from board wipe and we can also put that into delay our opponent so what is the correct move i think the safer thing to do now is champion followed by Thalia as lieutenant, and then swing in like this. Back to them. Opponent passes back. Interesting, interesting. Kind of want to play that, but this big boy looks pretty nice. But the problem is the mentor won't work with anything, so maybe this is the right move. I think it is. Okay, we'll go with the Thalia, and now we shall swing in. And opponent bolts that Thalia, but this thing will come into play tap before it resolves. Probably should have bolted that. Yeah. Oh well. Back to opponent. And look at that Norn doing some work. And opponent swings in. Why? Why? Well, I guess that's why, because they conceded. Game three. No changes to the sideboard. And is this? A winning hand it's not terrible could be better so we'll keep it and hope for no more lands opt canis okay start things off champion and pass back opponent passes back to us another champion hmm 
So maybe the better move here right now, champion, followed by bodyguard, remands it, sure. Then we shall swing in for two and pass back to our opponent. Opponent passed back to us, interesting. Now let's try Karazev, does two there, okay. Now it would be nice to play the Canis with this, but for now, I'll just go with the Canonist. Then we shall swing for three and back to them. Hopefully no board wipe, no board wipe. Okay, now let's play the bodyguard, protecting, uh, I guess the Canonist. Now let's go for big boy swing. Will we see Cryptic? Mm, that we do. Okay, back to our opponent. Do they have Emrakul here? No, Jace, okay. Now back on our turn, Remorseful Cleric. So what is the right play here? Turn this into a creature. And I doubt he has a bolt in hand. Do we risk it? The three at Jace, this at him, this also at him. Yeah, I'm gonna risk no bolt and go token at him. Risk paid off. Now Remorseful Cleric, back to them. And there is the match. Pretty good, I suppose. And now on to the next one. Opening hand is not super great. This turn one certainly isn't, but it's not terrible either. So we'll give it a shot. Play that pass back. This humans, most likely our opponents either spirits or humans. Pull Mox Amber, then we'll drop down Thalia's Lieutenant, swing for three, and pass back. Mausoleum Wonder, and back on our turn, Odric. Nice. We don't have any legendaries for the Mox to get to Odric. So we'll drop down the Crusader. I wonder if there's a path coming, though. Anyway, swing in, and there is a path. That's fine, so we can play that next turn. And then back to them. Opponent drops Collected Company, Spell Color, and Phantom. Swings for five, and back on our turn, Champion. So we shall go Odric. And since it's legendary, let's go Champion. And now we can swing in. We may want to hold back with this, but we do have a second one in hand. They could spell call this one. I think it's worth the risk. Swing with both. They trade. They get a four, and then back to them. Drug Skull Captain in a Phantasmal Image. Opponent swings for seven. So they'll have lethal next turn. We gotta go for it. Back in our turn, we'll go with the Crusader. I uh, just gotta swing in. Not like we have a choice. Walks like that. So they survive, but at least we don't die right away. I mean, we might die right away. But at least not clearly we die. Opponent draws. And there's a concede. Cool. So going into game two, I'm gonna get rid of the copter. Two bodyguards. One of this guy. One of this guy. One of that guy. And it's that we're gonna put in four Maguses, two Fiend Hunters. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand. This actually looks kind of interesting. So I think we should keep it. Hierarch and it's champion. Well, I think the best move here. Norin. And pass back. Mosley Wonder and opponent passes back. So three mana. Best move champion. Followed by the Thalia. And then pass back. Opponent plays Drogsil Captain. Swings for four. And then back to our turn. Didn't want to land. But now we'll go with Alia. And we could go with the Norin. Just to get some extra juice in. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. We'll have to sacrifice one of them at the end of this turn, though. Now swing for ten. They take the ten. Okay. So one Norin comes back. And the second Norin comes back. Now back to our opponent. Opponent plays a noble. Swings for four. We go to eight. And back to our turn. Land. Whale. Let's swing with the team. At least we don't have to worry about collected company with Dahlia out. Walks like that. Now the question is, will our opponent have the win here? And holy shit. Ooh, spell color. The problem is our opponent has like a lord here. Then we lose. Uh, uh, uh. Darn. I thought we might just get away with it. So on to game three. No change to the sideboard. In Maguses. Our curve is ass. Four lands. I don't think we can win like this. So I'm going to mull. Ah. Oh, I guess we keep bottom and pass back. We're probably going to lose this one. I think their first hand was better. Yikes. Norn. Okay. Probably one of the better cards we could have pulled. We just got to hope everything in their hand is ass. But so far, it looks pretty solid. Opponent swings in for three. Back on our turn, Crusader. So best move, Thali's Lieutenant. Then Norin. And swing in for four. They go to 13. Back to them. Rogus Skull Captain. Swings for six. Another Noble. And back on our turn. We ain't doing so hot. So I think the best move here, play the Crusader. I mean, the thing is, if they have a Lord next turn, they win. Swing with both. Jump there. Back to them. Let's see if they have it. Lord, yes, no. Maybe so. Maybe collect the company into a Lord. Collect the company or Warship. Oh, it is a Warship. I felt it coming. Oh boy, what a way to go out. I'm mean, like, we could have put a warship in our deck, you know. Well, we can deal 25 this turn. Nope, sorry, 26 this turn. But who would have thought 26 damage wasn't enough? Okay. Wah, wah. But we did have a good run. I would say that the deck was a success. In total, I played 10 paid matches with this deck between practice matches and recorded matches. And all in all, there were seven wins and three losses. That's a pretty good number. And I guess now the question to ask is, how does this compare to five colored humans? And to be honest, I'm not really sure. There were some games where this deck here was really, really fast, and it just seemed super unstoppable. And then there are some games where it just didn't really come together. Compared to the five color human deck, maybe this deck is a bit of a glass cannon. Because when all the cards come together here, it produces some crazy stuff like Champion getting super big with Norin and Kithian potentially flipping turn two. This deck seems to have a lot of potential. And looking back on it, when we first made the five color human deck, it only had a three and two win record. So it didn't really seem that great at first, but that video came out on a Monday, and by that Saturday, it won an SCG tournament, and then it suddenly became a top tier deck. So who really knows what's good and what's not? And just like with all decks, only time will tell so only time will tell if this deck takes off but that is all for now be sure to subscribe and comment and as always i hope you have a great day